Were you a part of the panic this week or the last couple weeks? Did you take a bath in, in the stock market and lose a bunch of money? Did you freak out and sell out of your positions? Well, I read this book recently called The Unknown Market Wizards. And what I've learned about it is that, well, what I learned, well, is could be really beneficial to you and anybody else who invests in stock markets or markets in general. I can't remember the guy's name who wrote it, Jack something, but he's written a number of influential books on traders. People in the hedge fund world, institutional world. Um, this book though is about people who are really unknown to the trading world or investment world in general. He went out and seeked out people who had phenomenal returns in comparison to the markets, competitors in their market. And he interviewed them and learned more about where they came from, how they got into trading, and most importantly, their philosophy, how they approach trading, their big wins, and most importantly, their big losses and what they learned from them. I found this really incredibly enlightening. As a financial advisor for 20 some years, we have always been taught that you put money in the market in a diversified manner and you just buy it and you hold it until you retire. And in the last 20 years with the internet and the evolution of algorithmic trading, well, choppy markets have really become more frequent. Uh, they have big swings and oftentimes create a lot of emotional stress for the people who are invested. Over the years, I've questioned how we go about managing money for individuals. This diversification element, how we diversify, how we manage risk, how we go about selecting investments, bigger portfolios compared to smaller portfolios. And what this book showed me and enlightened me was that there's a whole nother world of investors, often called traders, that can really give you some great insight and who actually don't ever really lose as much money as their average Joe. The first thing I learned was each one of the individual traders that were interviewed have a particular focus on what they, how they go about investing or trading in this case. They have a certain uh, type of investment tool they use, and they have a process that works with that tool, but also works within the markets that they are trading. I found this particular interesting because a lot of them, half of, I would say a third of the book was derivative traders who trade really indexes, and they have a very simple process about identifying when to get into a market, when to get out of a market, when to take profits, when to take losses, most importantly. They all have set rules for which they go about trading by. Um, the biggest one that I learned was they all run pretty much stop losses, meaning uh, they, they buy their position and then they set a uh, minimum uh, loss or maximum loss they're willing to take and so they set a price below that purchase price and then uh, if the position moves against them and hits that stop loss it automatically sells the position out now I was always told that when you buy a stock or, or a bond or something that your stop loss would run 8 to 10 percent below where you were at what I learned with these guys was they're running like one and a half percent on you know, one and a half and in stocks, four percent. And I found this really interesting because in a lot of cases, well, one case in particular, the guy says, yeah, I pretty much get stopped out roughly 60 percent of the time, meaning he's losing 60 percent of the time. But his stops outs are roughly one and a half to two percent below the tar uh, below the purchase price it's the other 40 percent that are such big wins they offset his 60 percent loss ratio see i guess when you really have a tight stop loss 
you are going to get stopped out. But it's most likely it's going to be a bad trade anyway. So if you had put it at 4%, you had gotten stopped out there. And if you had put it at 10%, you got stopped out there. But what I found with these guys was they didn't look at losing money or have, getting stopped out of a position as a bad thing. They looked at it as, this saved my butt. And this allowed me to be in the game still and play the game longer. One thing I learned from this book was each one of them does extensive research on what they are investing in or buying. They all oftentimes spend months, weeks, days, hours on hours researching an event or researching a company or researching uh, what's going on in the market. But they all spend time researching their positions. They don't carry a lot of positions. They are pretty sizable uh, holdings when they allocate. And they'll allocate small up until their max position. And then as the position takes off and starts making money and starts to run, they'll just pile into it in a big way. So they're basically getting really deep into a position. And in one case, they were one guy was talking about how he will put on a position and it'll represent 30% of his overall capital. But as he says, I've got a 1% stop below. And when, the minute I hit my target price, I take two-thirds of my profits off the table and let a third run. And that way, I lock in those profits. In a lot of cases, these guys are in and out, in and out of a position within the day. But many of them will actually be in a position for a, m a number of days, weeks, and even months. Which is against the idea of a trader who like we hear about people who are day traders and they're in and out of the market on a day-to-day -day basis you know or a minute-to-minute -minute basis a lot of these guys plan out their trades in a very time-consuming lengthy time and then they go about and they place the trade when the time is right and that trade may last a half an hour 10 minutes some of them and the, and when i say t like minutes these guys are using derivative products that are highly leveraged. So when they buy a position and it moves, they're getting exponential jumps because of the leverage ratios. Compared to buying a stock, most stocks don't move, you know, 20, 30, 50% in a matter of a minute or two. So it's a difference there, but the common thing is they do their research, they spend time doing it, and then they make their trade, and oftentimes they're winners. One of the other items that I noticed was they pretty much all have enter points and exit points. They determine how much they plan to make and also lose right off the bat. And then when they hit those points, they're out, they're done. Even if the position continues to run, most of them are just like, that was the point, I made my money, boom, I'm out, I move on to the next trade. I find that interesting because recently with COVID and all the um, basically day trading phenomenon that's happening again, I'm seeing people buying these companies, they're making enormous gains. 20, 30, 50, 100, 200, 300% in a very short period of time. And they just think it'll just keep going. But when you have such a big gain in a position, it just makes a lot of sense to trim that back. Take some profits. I mean, the worst case is you buy it and then you lose all your money in it. Like using a derivative product or um, buying the stock at the top of the uh, top of the the chain like we saw with GameStop. I think this is where we really need to sit down more and more and plan out our investments. And when we do get run-ups in long-term positions, we trim them back. We take risk off the table. We've seen this recently in the last couple weeks where we had over the last number of months, we've had these exponential gains in companies like Tesla and all the EV stocks and even in energy now, and they're big gains. And all of a sudden, within a week, two weeks, 
38 to 60 percent of those gains are gone and now people are going oh this is a crash the answer is no it's not a crash it's a retracement it's a recalibration of risk within the big institutional traders i mean when you have big gains and you're highly leveraged you sometimes get tapped on the shoulder and say deleverage and what that means is you cover your short positions but it also means you start selling some of your long positions that you have enormous gains in and that's what we've seen here in the last couple of days or last couple of weeks is a deleveraging taking the risks down because nobody wants to blow up and go out of business the other thing was these people are patient and a lot of them admit they're not patient people they want to be in they want to jump in they want to see opportunities they talk about their missed opportunities but they're patient they realize having patience to wait for a trade to happen to materialize in the way they have done their research and you know created a theory about how it was going to work and they just sit and wait in some cases they wait a long time and that to me i think is a very big lesson because recently with this market turning over over the last couple of weeks has presented a really great opportunity and when you start to look at different indicators like the vix the vxn and you see these spikes in volatility well they all have spiked up but then they hit a roof and oftentimes the best time to get into a stock or uh, a trade is at the top of the volatility range and when you get a topping of the volatility range that's the time to enter but i see more people talking about a crash i mean a crash is like 20 some percent and i know the nasdaq's down 11 12 percent but today friday the 5th of march the market after 2:30 or 2:30 or so eastern i think that's uh 1 central all of a sudden the market rallied and all of a sudden it put in a higher high on a weekly basis compared to the week before which is a signal that we may have seen the end of this pullback and a move higher and that's where you with patience can really capitalize on buying things that are at a discount and be able to ride them higher and profit from them and the last thing that i learned from this out of the five things i learned was sometimes the best trade is no trade and when i mean no trade if it isn't there don't manufacture it don't go looking for something don't go outside your comfort zone or your special specialty and go try to buy something that really isn't something you know about because oftentimes when we do this we lose i recently did this i had a massive massive three-day gain in a uh, trade it was purely a trade and i mean i was flying high but i felt like i had to get back in i had to do something and of course i've got a twitter account and of course i get a notice high volume on xyz blah 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 guess what i did i jumped into it didn't do my research didn't take a couple hours to go dig around on it theorize about it that kind of thing instead i've just bought it guess what well it expired today and now it's worthless to me that's a learning i'm up am i upset about it a little bit but i learned from it and what i learned was sometimes after a big win it's just shut the computer off go out and have a drink celebrate that and when you screw up shut that computer off go out and celebrate that because you just learned something all these guys in this book unknown market wizards have losses have had big losses a handful of them talk about blowing up and i mean six figure level blow ups like one day you're almost seven figure account and next day you're zero i mean that's pretty magnificent but what the, we can all take from this is if we have patience and we do our research and we have target entries and exits and we follow our rules and we know when to say i'm not doing anything today 
you're going to do well. It's just a process. And the, tr the true need is be patient and build that process and learn.